poverty line. And even if you look at the standards of poverty, you cannot relate uh, the urban poverty to the rural poverty in a way, because the, the structure is different, the parameters has to be different. Uh, so uh, given, given that as, as uh, a base or the fact, uh, you know, we are not jo you know, uh, taking jobs to the people. It's, you know, people are coming to urban uh, locations and uh, you know, cities looking for jobs. Uh, how do you think the, uh, the work uh, MAM is doing or rest of you are putting in in terms of rural India, that is going to change the fact that uh, the jobs are, uh, people are going to jobs and not uh, jobs for people. So how, is, how do you think that is going to shape up and change? Uh, because I believe that's one of the strong points where you actually can re reduce poverty if you're able to take jobs to people. So uh, this is this is something that has been that's been playing in our mind when we were when we started working in rural areas, and we know of reverse brain drain. People going to America and Europe, Indians, uh, especially young people, are coming back to India because there are opportunities opening up in India. And if we are able to do that exact same thing in rural areas, why would people have to come to cities? And it's extremely annoying actually to be cycling in Kolkata when fumes are coming into your face and there are so many people. It's just so crowded, it's so polluted, it's so noisy. And if and that's only because we're trying to make cities the hub for all of economic activities. And if we can change those activities and opportunities and create them in rural areas, uh, definitely things will change, is, is at least my perception. And having said that, of course, there is a need to address uh, problems in the cities because you can't take people and say, no, go back to your villages, you can't stay in cities. Of course not. Those, those opportunities have to be created for them as well. I think you said it. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. I, I think we have more, more questions, but what I'd like to do in the interest of time is break up into our roundtables. We're going to put a few questions up on the board and then get feedback. Hopefully, this will also be a platform to get feedback as well. Um, so I don't mean to cut every, everyone off. Um, I, I think this will allow us actually to uh, address more of, of people's comments and actually get views from a lot of the people in the audience. So the, the three questions we've put up on the board and that we'd like to seek feedback, the, the first is, is very much how, how has impact investment into social enterprise played a role in poverty reduction, reduction and addressing other social and environmental concerns? And I guess this can really be how, whether, uh, it has, whether it's lived up to its potential in doing this, a and could it be better? And we'd just like to get feedback and views on that. Um, the second one is, addresses impact investment in platforms like uh, the Impact Partners platform we're trying to create, and how can these platforms more effectively engage social enterprises, investors, and other intermediaries? And, and maybe that's a more general question. How do we better bring together social enterprises, impact investors, and others who can help with their work. And, and the third question really goes to uh, the social stock exchange we're trying to create. Um, can this, do, do people see this as a, as a mechanism that can help with poverty reduction uh, by increasing the flow of impact investing? So, so those are they're very general questions, and what I'd like to do, I think we have enough tables here, if we could just divide into six round tables, the panelists are going to come down and one will moderate at each table, and, and the idea is to just get a fl free flow of ideas. Maybe someone at each table can take notes, and then at, at the end, after maybe 20 minutes of discussion, come up and report back to the group on what the discussion was, and not... not, con not outcomes, but at least the discussion and what people, what the sense of the group is on these issues. So can we move to that now? I think we have, uh, we have six tables set up here, and I think that's just about right for the number of people in the room. So if, if the panelists could, could find their way down. We discussed almost all the three questions, that's good. And uh, we decided that uh, impact investment has done uh, a lot of good in terms of uh, the empowerment and the dignity which it provides to the people and not just in terms of the economic goods for poverty reduction, that's one. Um, we discussed a little bit about the mainstream enterprise and social enterprise, how, how you differentiate between the two, but that's an ongoing discussion in any case. Uh, well, uh, one of the things which we discussed was, you know, there's a lack of clarity or 
the parameters based on which uh, an enterprise could be measured uh, for, uh, for getting subscribed to a social exchange as such. And there could be different views on that. And finally, uh, one of the things we thought would be relevant was that uh, the exchange by itself could set some baselines and targets and keep making disclosures on, uh, on all the three Ps, uh, the triple bottom line by itself, uh, so that uh, the spirit with which social enterprises engage with the exchange is taken forward by the exchange uh, on its own. Yeah. Thanks. The other thing we discussed is if there was an exchange which is created where much like uh, Teach for India, where people volunteered uh, the time, we get professionals to volunteer and we could uh, advertise it through existing professional channels like MBA schools, alumni lists, ICI, and get them to volunteer time so they could go and help um, startups or uh, NGOs which require business planning, strategy, auditing help, and they could do that support and uh, it could be facilitated through the exchange. Is it on now? Yes. Um, I'm Flory Wilson. I work for the uh, for B Lab on the Global Impact Investing Rating System, um, and it seems like we all had uh, conversations that uh, where we came to many of the same conclusions. Um, we spent much of our conversation just defining what a social enterprise is, and determined that there are you know two main criteria for defining a social enterprise: one that it's a mission-driven organization, and secondly that it is a financially sustainable organization. We recognize, though, that there's a, a full spectrum of, of different hybrid models, businesses that at certain um, phases of their, of their life cycle or, or their growth cycle uh, that require some subsidization. Uh, similarly, we talked about uh, defining what an impact investor is and also came to a conclusion that uh, impact investors run a very broad range of investors who are uh, you know, driven primarily by financial return with a kind of an impact, social impact uh, um, uh, floor. Uh, and then on the flip side, there are investors who are uh, more driven by um, focusing on impact and may, make, uh, uh, may be willing to accept kind of lower financial returns. Um, and, and so the value of a social stock exchange is to bring those two groups together uh, and, and have transparency both in financial performance as well as social performance. Um, and then enabling kind of the investor to identify the social entrepreneur that meets its individual investment criteria um, and just help to create those linkages. Um, uh, you know, another thing that came up in our conversation was, well, um, how can we identify, you know, thinking about social enterprises that are that are younger uh, and might not be ready for kind of a public exchange, um, how can we still connect those types of investors, excuse me, entrepreneurs with investors? And, and so I think what's really um, innovative about what Impact Investment Exchange Asia is doing is they have two platforms, one, a private placement platform for those investors that that are uh, maybe looking for earlier stage capital and then uh, the uh, impact exchange for um, you know, uh, uh, social enterprises that are further along in their life cycle. And, and just the last thing, uh, a comment I'd like to make, which was actually the first um, statement that was made in our group was, um, it's a nice analogy about, you know, in, in the agriculture sector, there are a number of product certifications that focus on organic products, fair trade products, um, clean soil certification, and, and the value of those certifications is uh, improving financial performance for, for those farmers and for those growers. And so similarly, uh, a social stock exchange can help establish a similar collective among social entrepreneurs to ensure that there is uh, financial benefit for, for that collective uh, community as well. Hi, I represent this group. My name is Sarita, and I represent the multi-commodity exchange. So, <laughs> you know, a commodity exchange, and I'm listening to a social stock exchange, which is very much in our cards, too. I think the group over here is a mix of uh, somebody from the IIT alumni and, and you know, entrepreneurs and from NASCOM Foundation. And our debate and our conversation was more on the fundamental questions that were part of these three questions. So, you know, I would like the group, the whole 
class to look at the fundamentals. If you take question number one, the very fundamental question we had was for any impact investment to be successful. We are not disputing that it will play a role. Yes, it will. But it would be successful only if it had a business model and if it had a sustainable business model. So the, is that available somewhere? That was the fundamental question we had. For the second question that is here, we are concerned about the awareness that exists in the general audience out over there on what a social stock exchange is all about and even impact investment. So that's a concern that we have. We feel unless those issues are addressed, it would be futile to even go deeper into answering how these platforms could play an effective role. As for the third, uh, you know, uh, we, uh, the uh, consensus uh, was would a social stock exchange would be successful only if it were be able to achieve a critical mass. Uh, so would the compliance issues, the regulatory, the criteria for who would be the members, how would all those things be set up? Is the expertise out there to set up a social stock exchange? Uh, that's what we debated about. Thank you. Uh, we basically uh, first asked the fundamental question, what is impact investments? As um, most of them were confused whether it is impact investments uh, through social enterprises which are for profit or not for profit, though the uh, uh, Asia Exchange told it is both the uh, for profit and not for profit. And uh, we also had a uh, very strong view from one of the members that it has to be a collaborative effort from the government and if not Without the government, uh, the impact investments, uh, you know, impact will not be as much as uh, what it could be. And uh, in regard to uh, the, uh, the the various kinds of platforms that is emerging for social impact uh, investments, everyone was appreciative of the fact that these are creating new avenues for uh, new uh, social investors. And uh, for social uh, exchange that was mentioned here, most of our uh, you know, panel uh, members weren't sure of what exactly it means. Uh, we need to learn more about it, uh, what it offers. But uh, basically, it, uh, it is similar to what uh, uh, we all know about uh, certain intermediary organizations giving funds to NGOs. But here in this case, since it's a impact investments and where there is more clarity is needed in terms of what exactly we mean in terms of for-profit, financially sustainable enterprises, we need to wait and see how that shapes up. And most of our members f felt that uh, we would be keen to know how it shapes up. That if anyone has. Up, um, I'd like to invite Anurag Ag Agarwal, who heads up the investment banking practice for IntelliCap, as well as Robert Crable, the Managing Director for Impact Investment Exchange, because we have an important announcement to make. So, uh, Robert, do you want to announce, or no, should I go please. ahead? Please, why don't you go ahead, Anurag? I've spoken enough this last 45 minutes. All right, so uh, uh, IntelliCap has been working closely with the Impact Investment Exchange and Impact uh, Investment Platform uh, team, uh, Shujok team, uh, in mapping out uh, social enterprises who could be listed on these platform and the exchange. And we've just about uh, completed the exercise. We'll also be publishing a public document uh, to this effect, uh, which we'll be happy to share with you uh, at the time when it is released. Uh, uh, what we want to announce is a partnership that uh, we are getting into with the Impact Investment Exchange and the Impact Platform for uh, you know sourcing, MF, uh, sourcing uh, transactions in India. So we will be their partner in India, and uh, we hope to take 